plaintiff, Mary Ann Boyle, says the defendant is her son, and he's been addicted to heroin and cocaine for several years. Mary Ann claims last year the defendant overdosed and was technically dead, but he was able to be revived at the hospital. She's suing him today for an oil tank. Defendant Patrick Boyle admits that he is a recovering drug addict who's still struggling with his addiction to this day. Patrick says when he was 15, he witnessed his sister get shot in the head as a result of drugs, and he feels his insurance should cover the damages to the oil tank. Tell me what happened. Well, my son's had an addiction with heroin and cocaine. Last year he died, and he was able to be saved from an overdose they of heroin. They revived him? Yeah, he overdosed and died. They found him. One of his friends called the ambulance. They brought him to the hospital. They gave him Narcosin in the chest, and they saved his life. I'm glad he's still alive. I love my son more than anything in the world. To your knowledge, how long has he been addicted to heroin? And cocaine, you say? Yeah, That's crack. what they call a speedball, right? Yeah. Mixing um, them together? I would say since 2006. And I really... How old were you in 2006, sir? 24 or 25. 24, so... Was he living with you? Yeah, and when I would talk to him and say, please don't do that. How did you first notice? Oh, uh, the mood swings. And, um, he would I not, had mood he, swings. I ain't on no heroin, no. <laughs> Or cocaine. He would, uh, he would go to sleep like 8 o'clock at night and not get up all day, and we wouldn't see him all day. And he would have, get really, like, violent sometimes. And he went to jail How for, did you determine it was heroin, no? He told me. Oh, okay. And that's what they determined at the hospital when he died and they brought him back. But that was last year. How old are you now? I'm 32. I'm sure he just didn't up and volunteer when you said, son, you're sleeping until 8 o'clock. He didn't just volunteer and say, mom, I'm on heroin. No. The reason I'm asking this is that heroin is an epidemic, particularly yes. in suburban America right now. Um, and so... We want to educate some of the mothers on what signs to look for. And mood swings isn't enough. That my, my other sons told me that he was using. Gotcha. And a couple of his friends. And then one of his best friends died mm -hmm. of, of it this summer. They found him dead in a car. So he took it bad, and I was hoping he would stop. Mm. I think he needs a little bit of help. You willing to get help, sir? Absolutely. Oh, good. We're going to help you then. Good. We're going to help find your rehabilitation center. All right. Good. All right. That's tough. How many other children you have? I have five. Okay. My and one daughter got shot in the head buying drugs. He was with her. They, they went down. I don't know what they were doing in North Philadelphia. Was she addicted to drugs? Yeah. Or she was just around? Yeah. She was addicted to heroin, too. Mm. And uh, they went down there, and someone drove up to them and shot through the car, shot her right through the head. What part of Philly you live in? That I is live a in tough a, town. I live in Levittown. I live about 30 minutes from Philadelphia. But, Suburb. Yeah, the kids just go there to buy drugs. How are they uh, getting the money? Well, they they would work. He, he had a job. He worked all the time. And he's always been a good father to his daughter. Whenever she needed anything, he got it for her. Sir, you want to give me some background? I'm 32 years old. I'm a recovering drug addict. I struggle with addiction till this day. I haven't been the easiest kid to raise, I admit that. I hung with the wrong crowd, I ran with the wrong people. I made poor decisions, very poor decisions. I love my mother with all my heart. She's the best mother anybody could ask for. Oh. Like I said, I have the best I have the best parents in the world. When I was 15, I witnessed my sister being shot in the head right in front of me. I became a father at a very young age. I was incarcerated in jail for something I never even did when I was 23 years old. When I was 24, I committed a crime. I did go to jail for something I did. I paid my debt to society. I was in prison. I, I enrolled in some programs, which I successfully completed. I got out of prison. I successfully completed my state parole. Once again, I started running with the wrong crowd and made poor decisions.
I'm sorry about this. I would love nothing but to get this over and done with and put behind me. How many times have you been to rehab? Two or three. I have a relative that went six, so. It's a rough road. Yeah. How long were you in rehab? I was in a therapy, uh, state prison that was a <coughs> therapeutic community for drug addicts. And I was in there How for- How about after that? A, f a few weeks, not, nothing, yeah. nothing How about really the third long. third time, a few weeks? Yeah, yes, that it's work. always once they were ready to let me that's go. That's detox. That isn't treatment, that's detox. Where you just go and get it out of your system. All right, good luck to you. I'm glad that you accept. That's the number one thing. First step is accepting that you have That's a drug right. addiction. Number one, if you all have folks who are hooked on drugs and they keep denying it, they're not ready. Only when they come to you and say, mama, brother, sister, daddy, I have a drug addiction and I want help. That's the first step. If they don't do that, you're wasting your time. So you've taken the first step. You probably have done that a few times. Just keep on stepping, all right? Keep trying. Uh, why are you suing your son for property damages? Well, what happened two, this time? I have two pictures. He uh, backed his car up into my front lawn, and he, he said that uh, he misjudged it. Ain't and no misjudge. He was nodding out. Let me see. <laughs> and you know what that was? He <laughs> ran over the oil tank, and he tried to fix it the best of his pipe. knowledge. But it did, you don't it's not a right. pipe. <laughs> all right. And you all discussed it, and he said he would repair it. Where's your car? Well, I called his car insurance, and they gave me this check for $284.96. And here's the estimate what it cost. That was my car. It was his car. Gotcha. So this is the He damage. tried to fix it like that. Gotcha. You received two eighty four. dollars What was the actual cost? Twenty four sixty six. dollars That's what an oil tank cost. That's buried for your house, for heating your house. Sir, what do you say to this? I don't she feel She has received that. only a check for 284, which you haven't cashed, and because you're not accepting this, obviously, from his insurance company. No. Okay. I, I tried to talk to them for two weeks. So they sent you this. That's it. Hoping that you would cash it. Yeah. Thinking that you didn't know any better. Yep. Because folks, if someone sends you a check and you cash it, you can't complain. Yep. So anybody sending you a check that you don't want to accept, do not cash it. What do you say to this? It was a bright sunny day outside. I was backing my car up. As I looked in my rear view, I thought I was far enough away from the, po the poles I was mistaken. I backed right into him, directly in the center of my car. I don't feel I'm responsible for this because it was an accident and my insurance company should be helping me out with this. And $300 isn't enough to fix it. I would like to get this over and done with and behind me as quick as possible. Well, but $300 is not putting a new tank in the I'm, ground. I'm glad you recognize that and know that this doesn't cover uh, the accident that your insurance should pay for. It's your insurance. Correct. Your, your car insurance. Correct. And I have they're, they're liability. To, mm -hmm, I liability. have car insurance. It was valid at the time. I have my insurance card. Yeah, clearly, I have, they I tried a, to give your mother I have a couple illegal. of dollars, like many insurance companies. These insurance companies, and some of them, just try to just rob the people. The most blatant form was in uh, New Orleans at the uh, hurricane. Yeah, Katrina. Katrina, yeah. just rob those folks. Give them 10 cents on the dollar. A couple of insurance companies said, well, we only insure your home's water damage. So this wasn't water damage, this was wind damage. Then, well, we only insure wind damage. <laughs> yeah. This was water damage. Why oh, they play games with these folks? All these folks had sleep. to sue. There was a class action suit. They were successful. The insurance company uh, did ultimately pay, paid less than they should have. Mm, mm, mm. Unfortunately, sir, you are responsible. You cause the damage, you have to pay. You say it was a mistake, it's negligence. You have a duty to see what's behind you and not bump into it. Um, however, you can go after the insurance company. Uh, you pay this judgment, and then you take the receipt or evidence of payment of this judgment to your insurance company. I've paid this judgment. This was the actual amount. 
this is what you all should pay. And they say, no, then just take them to small claims court. All right, so you're gonna have to go through a little work, but you know, your mistakes are gonna cost you a little work. That's essentially what it boils down to. Good luck to you both. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna help you get some treatment, all right? Thank all you. right, judgment for the plaintiff. I'm open to treatment. I love my son, I love all my kids. I have five kids, I love all of them. And I don't want nothing to ever bad happen to him. He's like the best kid I have. I love my mother with all my heart. I have the best parents in the world. More than any kid could ask for. They've always been there for me. Drug addiction is a serious issue with kids in the suburbs.